is Tuesday morning. We're in the room of doom. Lovely light in the room of doom though. It's actually a bit less full of doom. Um, I had all the intention in the world of vlogging over the weekend and vlogging the process of mum and I moving around the front two rooms until we started to do it and realised that neither of us was strong enough to lift all the furniture. So unfortunately, that is not a two woman job. It's probably a three woman job. Um, so I need to rally some friends around to do it. So there's no weekend vlog because that was what it was going to be. And it didn't happen. So instead, there's going to be one this week. Um, I, as always, look tired, even though I'm sleeping very well. Such seems to be adulthood. And I'm just getting ready to go to like a breakfast event in Piccadilly. Um, until even like half an hour. Sipping my tea. I thought I'd put an outfit together. Spring has sprung in London. It's been like, I think it's gonna be like 19 degrees today or something really beautiful. No, not 19, that can't be right. No, I think it was 19. So I'm definitely gonna be sitting in the garden later. But for now, because I'm out this morning, it's not gonna be so warm. And I'm just gonna decide on an outfit. I'm thinking I might wear these shoes because I haven't worn these in ages my big proenza brogues and i'm not really walking very far i'm literally just these babies literally just walking to the station and then it's really close to green park so i could do an uncomfortable shoe so these might be the shoe so we'll start with those oh my god i got some amazing new adidas trainers um not to replace the sambas because the sambas are still going strong actually let me show you i've had these for i've had these for a year now and have worn them like i mean almost daily like more than any other shoe and i've had them for over a year actually and they're still holding up really 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 well so i didn't need a new pair but wanted a new pair these are actually sambas they're the adidas wales bonner japan they look like sambas but they're not. I've got them at End. Um, they have a shop in London. They have a shop in Newcastle, I think. They have an online shop. I'll link them in the description box because they are beautiful. They're a slightly different shape to the Samba. They're kind of thinner, a thinner sole. Um, yeah, thinner sole, slightly shaped more like a bowling shoe, I would say. But they are um, very, very, very similar and really beautiful. Like the detailing on them and everything is amazing. I love the way it even has like Wales Bonner written on the on the laces. So yeah, I'll link the description box true to size. I've got my normal size. Um, ridiculously comfortable. Love the fact that they're slightly off white with the brown. I would wear them today, but like I said, because I'm having a day of not walking very much, I'm gonna make the most of wearing a less comfortable shoe when I can wear those day in, day out on the most days when I am walking a lot more. Right, we're starting at the bottom. All right, guys, this is where we're at. I like it. I just might want to change the jeans. The jeans from Ray, Proenza shoes. I've got an Arquette sleeveless top on over, underneath, sorry, a row sleeveless knit and then totem blazer. It's kind of feeling chic because I'm going to like a nice restaurant for breakfast. So I don't want to be too casual or anything. I just don't know whether this would look nicer with a, these jeans feel really masculine in the cut, which I really like, but I don't know whether that's quite right for this look. I'm trying to one more pair of jeans maybe with it. Or do I just go with a shirt over the instead of a blazer? Let's try that too. The shirt definitely moves it into a more casual look, but I really like the shirt actually. I think it matches the jeans better, balances it out, but we will still try a different pair of jeans. I think this might be a bit too casual. Or well, maybe not. It's got a handbag and everything. The shirt's from Sir the Label. It's a really nice thick cotton. Back to the blazer and some lighter jeans. These are some Levi 5 at 190s. What do you reckon, guys? I actually think maybe I prefer the darker denim, personally. I really need to decide as well because I need to leave. And I'm not good at doing these decisions. Okay, in a total 180 and a massive mess behind me, switch to Arquette Blazer, APC jeans. 
and the the brogues all of that fussing and it's not my favorite outfit but i've simply run out of time and i'm just going to take a tan bag maybe maybe my todd's one because it's downstairs already half full to break up the blue and black a little bit but yeah not my best work after a lot of fuss Jasmine, yep, Jasmine, which is like my favourite, Guys, oh, my skin's finally clearing up a little bit. Um, not what was there to say. It is, it's like spring. It's iced coffee weather, which is what I'm going to make now. And that's not going to balance there. And it is truly a warm, beautiful spring day. I'm going to make a nice coffee and I've just picked up a parcel, which is a pair of shoes that I've wanted to ages and finally pulled the trigger on if you will so i'm going to show you those first of all make my coffee i'm in my workout gear because this morning i went to a um a plot a reformer plus class which i actually really really enjoyed uh only i've actually done it once before i was thinking i had never done it before but i did it once but i loved it with philippa k soft sport which is their fitness brand this set i've had for ever and ever and ever they give me a new one which i'm so excited about but i've honestly had this for maybe like three or four years which i think is quite good for active wear like some of the nike stuff i've got so like got holes in it way quicker than that um yeah that was really nice i went all the way to chelsea for it and it was lovely and it was a really nice walk actually through through chelsea right coffee time for a really long time it's been around for years and finally went for it because my dear Francis slides the black and brown ones that I wear all the time are like very much on their last legs they are pretty wrecked now so <laughs> give me a minute Some from Marnie. This is actually the first piece I have from Marnie. Um, I've forgotten exactly what they're called. Oh, the Fussbet, Fussbet cross sandal. <laughs> I um, went, I got my normal size, obviously I don't know how they fit yet. And based on how much I've worn my dear Francis ones, which are black and brown with a crossover, went for the ones with the tiny bit of brown detailing on them. I love them. I'm really pleased they've got this ankle, that ankle strap. Because um, the only thing I, I mean, I love those dear France ones and I've worn them so much, but if I wear them and then like on holiday in an evening and then when we walk back and it's a bit cooler and my feet are cold and they shrink a bit, I sometimes find it harder to keep a slide on. So this is the perfect solution to that. Also like how these look styled with socks so I can wear them from now onwards. They look kind of small holding them in my hand. So I'm excited to try them on and hopefully they fit really well, but aren't they so good? And it's sunny, so I can wear them today if they fit. No hanging about. I love them. I love them. I'm so glad I finally got them. All right, guys. Everlane t-shirt, St. Agni jacket, Chanel belt, weekday shoes, Marnie sandals, they do for true to size with socks, Todd's bag, Ray jumper, Shouting over Future Islands, who I'm actually going to see on Friday. I cannot wait. This is the look. I really wanted to wear blue jeans, but I just couldn't. I just have a day where jeans just aren't right. It's having one of those days, but I don't want to go. I'm going to sit in the park, in Victoria Park. I don't want to go sit not in jeans. So, just couldn't get the jeans right though. Maybe it was the socks and the sandals, but I don't feel quite ready to expose the toes to the world yet. And then I've got cut on gross sunglasses on. And I'm going to take my book and a water bottle and my headphones. I love this jacket. This is one from a couple of summers ago. Good morning, guys. It's about 8.30. Got the shower dressed, partly caffeinated. Um, had a really nice day yesterday. Went to the park and then went to a wine bar in De Beauvoir called Hector's, which I've been to a couple of times now. And it's so nice. Um, and it's another beautiful day. I'm gonna get the doors open, actually it's so nice and um wore the marnie sandals with socks which is what i'm gonna do again today 
I think they might be a bit hard, and, like the leather needs to soften in at the top of the foot. Um, um, to yeah, make sure that they're really kind of broken in and softened in, but they um, yeah, they were pretty comfy. So I'm gonna wear them again today with socks, and hopefully by the time it's sockless sandal weather, they will be really nicely um, broken in. I'm really pleased with them. I think I felt really nice wearing them. So today I am um, I'm at home this morning. I need to go do boring things like get keys cut. Oh, actually, a new coffee shop opened, a new branch of Jolene. Um, there's a few of the, there's already two in East London. The restaurant on Newington Green is one of my favourite restaurants in London. I've been only been going recently. I've been twice, and it is definitely some of the best food I've eaten here. So um, they've opened a new coffee shop on Well Street. So I'm going to walk to there, get a coffee, and um, I need to go get keys cut. And then I've got to go all the way over to St John's Wood to meet somebody. Um, so I'm going to then have a nice long tube journey, which is also why I spent lots of yesterday doing, but quite enjoying doing that because I'm just really enjoying getting the time to read. My freckles have come out so much because of the slight bit of sunshine. Um, I yeah, really enjoying reading on the tube. So nice day today. Um, feeling a bit meh, but these times come to us all. Oh, I've got therapy as well today, so actually, that's good. That's thing, something to remember. Oh, and going to, God, there's so much happening today, going to a new restaurant this evening that I've been invited to for free, which is so nice, called The Wards Project. I'll make sure to take some photos of it and things. Um, go there this evening with Sarah. It's in Bethnal Green, so I'm excited to try somewhere like completely new. Um, first things first, coffee. All of me. sponsored the Instagram post that I'm taking a photo of for is this isn't but I just wanted to mention this dress which I just everything just arrived I'm just trying it all on it's so nice it's such a lovely dress I think it's just a nice one that maybe will sell out quite quickly so I thought I'd mention it and the reason I really like it is because the strap the length of the straps are just with these this tie here which if you've got bigger boobs, a dress like this can be really unflattering because sometimes I find the neckline's either too low and I don't feel, you just don't feel very held in really, or too high. This, so the fact you can adjust it is so nice. I think this is such a lovely summer dress. I thought I'd mention it. I'll link it in the description box for you guys. Like I said, this bit's not sponsored, but the Instagram post is, so I am working with them, but.
wearing my Dickies dungarees, Levi's t-shirt, and my real dungaree face. I love them so much. So easy to wear. Um, it's Monday morning, and the last bit of footage that you just saw was Future Islands on Friday night. Woo! They were so good. I've wanted to see them so long. In the years that I've listened to them, religiously, I haven't seen them live. And they were amazing. They lived up to every hope, every expectation. I am desperate to see them again. It was just so good. Um, I've listened to them so consistently throughout, well, from being like 24, so for five years, that they don't even like remind me of one specific moment in life. They just remind me of a million and one moments of these very formative years of life. Um, so that was amazing. I loved it. And I thought that I would end this video with a book haul. I did lots of book shopping. I had some Waterstones vouchers, so I ordered lots online. And then yesterday I was feeling completely miserable. Um, so I went and bought some books in an attempt to cure that, which it momentarily did, but alas. Um, so I just went to a couple of the two bookshops on Broadway Market, um, which are both great. So I thought I'd show you them one or two one i've read already actually since it's arrived but i just thought that I would end with a chat about books from tomorrow the next one i'm going to ireland which i'm so excited about i haven't been to ireland in years and years so i'm going there tomorrow and then i go to lisbon on friday busy week so the next vlog will have some travel bits in it um so I just thought I'd end this one with a very like at home homely feeling i've got my coffee in my oslo mug mm. Start with a quick one, Peter Jar's Day by Linda Rosencrantz. This is just an interview that she took, um, did of him over the course of a day, which has just been transcribed uh, in 1974. He is an artist. I read about him. If any of you have read Olivia Lang's The Lonely City, you might be familiar with him through that. And then I also read, because the chapter that she does in that is about, I can never pronounce this man's name, David Wonorovich, Von Wonorovich who um, is also an artist and he worked out of Lower the Lower East Side. Um, and then I read this book when I was in New York last time. Wonorovich, Wan I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, and Peter Jar is referenced a lot in that too. So I really was interested in that and it's just also such a beautiful book. This is a really interesting book as well and just quite an interesting um, read about how much the Lower East Side has changed as well. And it has these really nice maps in the front and the back of Lower Manhattan. Um, well, so this is the East Village where it tells you like where all the artists were working on the specific roads, which is quite nice for then having a walk around and um, having that in mind. Anyway, that was the one that I've had for a while before. Uh, I've never read any Simone de Beauvoir. I've never read any of her work. So I picked up The Woman Destroyed yesterday, saw it in a bookshop. A lot of the theme of the books that I have been trying to get are smaller ones just because I've got some so much travel coming up. So I wanted like little ones that are easy to have in hand luggage and things. Um, I'm very excited to walk into the world of Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, this one, The Walker by Matthew Beaumont. I really want to, um, as I'm always saying, read more nonfiction. A lot of what I've got here are fiction books, but this one, um, The Walker on Finding and Losing Yourself in a Modern City. I am an avid walker, as you will know. I, um, I don't know where my mental health would be without going on a walk. And it's such a big part of my life to the degree that like, one of my favorite things about traveling is getting somewhere new and going for a walk. One of the reasons I'm falling in love with New York so much is because it's one of my favorite cities to walk around. It always has been. But like living there and having that as part of my daily life there to go on these walks is incredible. Um, it's such a huge part of my life. I honestly, and also finding myself very interested in the philosophy of it, which is what this book is. Um, what connects walking philosophy and the big toe? Can we save the city or, or ourselves by taking to the pavement? Really, really excited about reading that one. Uh, this is actually probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most. I got this at Donlan Books, the top of Broadway Market, and the woman who worked there, who was absolutely lovely, um, said that she loved this too. It's called The Reactor, a book about grief and repair by Nick Blackburn. Um, and it's a memoir that he wrote after suddenly losing his father. And it says, through philosophy, music, fashion, psychology, art and film, 
Blackburn travels a vast panorama of ideas and characters to offer an entirely new exploration of grief. Um, having lived with grief for over a decade now, I have often found lots of the writings on it not very helpful. <laughs> I know people really like Max Porter's Grief with a Thing with Feathers. That didn't really speak to me. Joe Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking did. That's kind of my go-to book that I recommend to anybody who is grieving or wants to understand grief or just read a very, very well-articulated memoir of that, the almost very um, instant aftermath of losing somebody. But I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. The way it's uh, laid out within the book as well, it's lots of short paragraphs on a page. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Maybe be a heavy read, but we'll see. This was a repurchase, Camus the Plague, uh, which I've read before. I, a friend came over the other day and was looking at bookshelves and she made, she was saying, oh, what are your favorite books on here? And then I was saying, oh, well, actually, lots of my favorites I don't have anymore because I've given them away. Because obviously you want more people to read your favorite books. Um, so I'm trying to make an effort to repurchase some favorites so that I actually have them and I will be stingy and not give them away. So The Plague, I saw in the shop yesterday and thought, I'll get that. And I liked this cover of it as well. It's a great book. Lots of fiction now, Year of the Witching by Alex Henderson. Um, this is, this is sort of, okay, it says, Born on the fringe of Bethel, Emmanuel does her best to obey the church and follow, follow the holy protocol. For it was in Bethel that the first prophet pursued and killed four powerful witches and so cleansed the land. And then a chance encounter lures her into the dark wood that surrounds Bethel. It's a forbidden place haunted by the spirits of the witches who bestow an extraordinary gift on Emmanuel, the diary of her dead mother. Fascinated by and fearful of the secret the diary reveals, Emmanuel begins to understand the truth about her own upbringing, the prophets and their history. For the real threat to Bethel is its own darkness. It must change. Like a good book like that. Excited about that one. This one I was going to try and read before I went away, but I've run out of time. Um, Other People's Clothes by Carla Henkel. The next like three books I was recommended all on one TikTok page, I think, or TikTok video. And the theme of it was something about, um, oh my God, I can't remember exactly, but about problematic female narrators who are partying a lot and it's all about like these formative years in your 20s, but it's all quite chaotic. So the next three books embody that. Um, this is about two girls moving to Berlin from New York. One of them grieving the death of her high school friend who was murdered. The other is obsessed with the exploits of Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears and wants to be a Warholian legend. They rent an apartment from an eccentric crime writer, Beatrice Bex. They spend their nights twisting through Berlin's club scene and their days hungover. Soon ex inexplicable things start happening in the apartment and the two friends suspect they're being watched by Beatrice. Convinced that their landlady is using their lives as inspiration for her next thriller, they decide to beat her at her own game. Sounds like that's going to be a really lovely, like, page turner and easy read. This is the one that I read, Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I finished this last week. Um, it's about a young woman who's living in the north of England in Newcastle. And she's a photographer and she takes uh, provocative photos of young men. And it kind of is talking about her career, um, her photography career, while also documenting her lifestyle, which is very, like, party heavy, drug heavy, um, she's making lots of questionable decisions and she is intensely dislikable, unlikable, whichever word is the right one for that, uh, the narrator of this, you just don't get on with her at all, but very good book for that reason as well and that you still kind of want to read it despite despising her, um, I really enjoyed it. Similar theme, Ketty Ralph, No Touching, this is about a uh, school, I haven't read this yet, it's about a school teacher in Paris who becomes a stripper, basically. And then I think from what I can gather from the blurb, then kind of embraces female relationships and friendships and her, um, her sexuality and the idea about desire alongside this very traditional and conservative life of being a school teacher in Paris. Another non-fiction, We Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Ab Abdu Abduraquib. Abdurakwin, I hope I've said that right. Um, again, on the theme of wanting to read more non-fiction and also being very interested in music, this is lots of essays about different musicians and how they've influenced his life. Um, in an age of confusion, fear and loss, Hanif Abdurakwib's is a voice that matters. 
whether he's attending a Bruce Springsteen concert the day after visiting Michael Brown's grave, discussing public displays of affection at a Carly Rae Jepsen show, or ruminating on the impact of Notorious B.I.G.'s death had on his childhood, he writes with poignancy and magnetism that resonates profoundly. They can't kill us until they kill us. He uses music and culture as a lens through which to view our world so that we might better understand ourselves and the times we are living in. Excited about that. And um, final one, which I mean like um, about 100 pages through, it's only 150 pages, Unattached Essays on Singlehood, edited by, edited by Angelica Marlin. Um, this is the very short essays. There's like 30 essays in this book, bearing in mind it is 150 pages, very short. Um, every essay is like a page or two, all written by women. And is it all written by women? Yes, it is. 30 incredible women. Uh, it is, I'm enjoying it so far. I think like if you've just gone through a breakup or something, this might be quite a nice one to read. Or if you were just at a point in your life where you are single and kind of interested in what that means for you right now, it is kind of repetitive. Like every essay so far is falling on the same narrative of being single is invaluable because you learn to love yourself, which is absolutely true. It's not that I don't think that or I think I agree with that entirely. Um, just so far, I feel like I've read the same thing said, just in different ways. Uh, but I, I am still enjoying it and so far I would recommend it. So that was my book haul. So many books to read. I'm really excited about The Reactor and The Walker. Um, yeah, they're the two that I'm looking forward to reading the most. Hopefully, because I'm travelling quite a lot this week, I'll get in quite a lot of reading time as well. And um, I'm going to finish this vlog here. I hope that you're all okay. Feels like a really funny time at the moment, doesn't it? I don't know why. Maybe that's just me that's feeling that way. But generally, I'm not been really feeling my best. But also, it'll pass. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Really looking forward to this week actually, and, like being away and things. So I will see you then. Hopefully, the next one will be. Well, I won't just be sat at home the whole time, which I also do quite like. <laughs>